So people have been modding the PlayStation 2 for pretty much the PlayStation 2's entire lifespan. That's usually what happens with the console. And the mod chips that we use today aren't the only mod chips that existed. There's been so, so many different chips for the PlayStation 2. And some of them offer some things differently than each other. Typically, mo like, it's to play burn games and region free your system. That's essentially what why you would do put one of these chips into your uh, into your PlayStation 2. However, some of them offer hard drive support, so you can put a hard drive in, load games from the hard drive, uh, install custom applications on a memory card, and all sorts of different various things. So. There's been so many different mod chips for the PlayStation 2 and a lot of them were really short-lived because they were when the PlayStation 2 was commercially relevant. Nowadays, all we really have is the Chinese clones of these chips. So if you've been following me on social media, you'll see that I post all these different PlayStation 2 mods with all these different chips. So today, I'm gonna show you all the chips that I have right now. I've amassed a nice little PlayStation 2 vintage mod chip collection and I'm gonna go through all of them and just sort of ramble about the differences between each one and stuff like that. So here we're gonna go and take a look into my Radio Shack drawers and this top drawer is nothing but PlayStation 2 mod chips. Here's where all of my mod chips place two are. So I'm gonna go through each one relatively quickly, uh, just show you what's in here, and then we're gonna take a little bit more of an in-depth look at each one, I'm gonna tell you something about them all. So here's the Matrix Infinity clone, the 1.99. This is a clone of a clone of a clone of a clone, of a clone. Well, I could talk a lot about that one later. Here we have the Modbo 750, and then this is, the, we'll talk about that in a second, this is the Modbo 5. 5.0, which is relatively common and popular. Popular, they're very, very cheap, very uh, easy to get access to. Here's the Mars Pro. This is definitely the one I recommend to anyone who wants to get into PS2 modding or wants a good quality chip. Mars Pro, all the way, hands down, no question. They're available. You can buy them. Mars Pro. Mars Pro. 100% love the Mars Pro because the rest of these are very unavailable. Here we have a DMS3, and then we have a DMS4. Very unavailable chips. And then here we have the Modbo 4.0. So all, pretty much all of these mod chips, what they do is they allow you to play region free, the system, and play backups. Some of them have hard drive support and others do not. Here's two versions of the crystal chip. If you notice, the oscillators are actually in different locations on the chips because one of these is a version one and the other is a 1.1. It's really cool that they came with these nifty little stickers to put on your console. Now here we have the Ghost V2. I have two Ghost V2s, and then here we have an O2 chip. We're gonna take, uh, like I said, we're gonna take a much more in-depth look at a lot of these. And then here we have the Super 7 Duo 2. And then in here we have some Duo 3s, and the Duo 3s actually came with uh, a little power LED indicator. There's also, there's more versions of the Duo. Here's the original Matrix Infinity. And then, uh, so we got green dot, orange dot, and then we got uh, the MX4. And then here are some one-offs. So the Muppet V12, the Magic 3, and then the Apple Pro. So let's, well, I'm gonna talk about each one a little bit more in depth right now. So here we have the Matrix Infinity 1.99. So this is a hacked firmware. What that means is this is based off of the firmware for the original Matrix Infinity, which is what is used on the Modbo. And the Modbo is also a hacked firmware of the original Matrix Infinity, meaning that um, it's the, the latest version of the firmware for the Matrix Infinity. The original is 1.93. This is hacked up to 1.99 because it's it's literally taking the code that's on the Modbo, which is only 98% accurate to the actual code that's on the original Matrix Infinity. It's hacked up. So on this, whatever clone this is, this firmware was created by a guy in Hong Kong. He took the Modbo firmware, hacked it up to 1.99, and then distributed it. Now, this particular chip is manufactured in three different facilities, one in Shenzhen, one in Taiwan, and one in Hong Kong. 
Now, two of those facilities actually, when they flash the firmware onto it, they flash it incorrectly. So two of the facilities that manufacture these chips will actually brick your BIOS if you install them. Now, there's no way to tell where you're getting one of these chips because the distribution centers for all of them are very, very, very different. So meaning you can buy, it can be manufactured in Taiwan, but you can purchase it from Shenzhen. Uh, so you never know where you're getting, getting them from and they can actually brick your BIOS permanently because it's hacked firmware. The Mobbo 5.0, the reason why this is a hacked firmware uh, is because this is using a it's, a, it's a clone chip of the original Actel. So on the Matrix Infinity, it's an Actel FPGA. And on this one, it's a Fractel which pretty much means fake Actel. It's a, it's a Chinese clone of this chip. It does essentially the same thing, but doesn't have the full capabilities. This particular chip on the Matrix Infinity, you can actually uh, rewrite the firmware on these. You can reprogram the firmware on these. On these ones, you cannot. If you try to reprogram the firmware on these, it'll brick your console. Both of these have hard drive support though, however. Both of these have hard drive support, so you can load games to your hard drive and play games from there. So a big difference between these two is um, the Matrix Infinity on the on the um, the FPGA on the original is capable of generating a clock signal, and on the Modbos it is not. So that's why you have the CX point on the Modbo, and you do not have those on the Matrix Infinity. And like I said earlier, the Matrix Infinity firmware is represented by the color of the dot on it. So you can actually upload or chain, burn new firmware to a disk and then install it and actually rewrite that. And if you do that with this, you'll brick it. So in, a, in addition to the other uh, Modbos, there's also Modbo 750, Modbo 5.0, and then you got the Modbo 4.0. So the three, the three different lives of the Modbo. So we're gonna move past those. We're gonna move past these Chinese clones. We're gonna talk about another Chinese clone, even though it's not a Chinese clone, it's just manufactured in China, the, Ma the Mars Pro. This is, this, like I was saying, this is the best chip. This is so reliable. Uh, what this is, is this is essentially a clone of the DMS-3. The DMS-3 is a super, super reliable, excellent firmware, excellently coded and programmed chip that has a very simple and very easy user interface to use. Um, a lot Discontinued in what, I don't know, 2005? something like that. Uh, most of these chips, like these big heavy hitters, like the DMS-3, and then here we have the DMS-4 Easy Eye, which what this is, is it's an easy installation. And I said I would talk about this later, this bag. So pretty much what this is, is the solderless solution to the DMS chips, line of chips, where you could just plug these in, plug them into the chip, and then here's a clip, and then this clip uh, would clip onto the CD DVD controller, and then this one will clip onto the BIOS, essentially being a solderless install. However, this chip is known today as the console killer. Reason being is because these uh, clips actually bend the pins of uh, the CD DVD controller and the BIOS chip. So th these installs kill your PlayStation 2 years later on. This chip can actually be converted into a soldered install uh, because it, you can actually trace back to where all the points are right on, on the chip here and actually solder it the real way. So uh, the DMS is so, is so uh, the user interface for, for installing games from the hard drive is very simple, great operating system on it. The Mars Pro is incredibly reliable, incredibly stable. That's why this is probably my favorite chip to use. I mean, I like the Crystal Chip, I like the Matrix Infinity, I like them all, but this is the, my favorite to use that you can actually obtain. And it's a lot simpler than if you wanted to do hard drive stuff with like the Modbo. Because with the Modbo to do hard drive stuff, you have to burn programs to a disk, copy those programs from a disk to your USB, boot from Dev1, or, or Dev1 is memory card, so copy them to your memory card, boot from Dev1, and then transfer more uh, files and stuff like that from a USB onto your memory card via Dev1, mass storage. And that's what's cool about the Matrix Infinity, which we're gonna get to right now. The Matrix Infinity actually has, phenot like, it has the gr uh, like a great menu, and like I said with the Modbo, you're able to boot from USB, boot from hard drive, boot from um, memory card, and that's what makes this one so great. However, obtaining all the files and all of the information on things to make that done is very, very difficult to track down. 
However, when you do it using a mod chip, it's incredibly reliable and stable. You wanna talk about reliability and stability. When it comes to hard drive, the crystal chip probably has the easiest uh, out of all of them. But then again, that's because I have all the files in order to do it. The crystal chip is very, very easy when it comes to hard drive booting. Excellent chip. And all of these, so these discontinued, think about it, these are all discontinued chips from like 2007. I don't know the exact dates when a lot of these came out of production, but they're old and you can't buy them or get them anymore. That's why the Mars Pro is such a great option nowadays. I really, really like it. And all of these are the same. They all do backups, region free. Um, I don't say that enough because, and a lot of people ask, but I feel that goes kind of without saying. So I don't know, but I'm saying it now. And a lot of these have great hard drive support and that's the addition to it, such as the Ghost. The Ghost has phenomenal hard drive support, similar to the Crystal chip. Now, here's the O2 chip. This one is probably the one I know the least about whatsoever. I know nothing about it, except I've seen what the user interface and the menu looks like for it. Very simple, very simple, very clean. Similar to like the DMS uh, Pro lines of chips. So here we have a Super 7. The Super 7 has a boot sequence, which um, so does the Duo 2. Now what a boot sequence is, is when you, like let's say you want to boot PS1 games, you need to hold reset and in or open in order to boot PS1 games. And that's because these are a little bit older chips. And the Duo 2 actually does not have the latest version of the ICE code. And the ICE code is the code that's actually programmed onto the Duo chip itself. The Duo 3, I don't know, if, I think the Duo 3 and up ended up having the latest version of the ICE code. After Duo 3, there's Duo 3 Ultra, and then there's Duo 3 Gold. Uh, or Gold, then Ultra. Ultra is my favorite because it's pure auto boot. Auto boot meaning no boot sequence. You wanna talk about boot sequences, let's get into uh, these old ones. So these chips, the Apple Pro, and then the Magic 3, these chips are not even, these were made before the Slim PS2 ever came out. So these were your mod chips before PS2 Slim. So these are really, really old ones, and they don't work on every revision. Speaking of chips that don't work on every revision, here we have the Muppet V12. The Muppet V12 is specifically designed for the V12 PS2 only. And the reason for it was because they integrated a lot of the laser fixes into the actual code of the Muppet chip. And it was supposed to be a one-all solve solution. Speaking of the solutions for the PS, uh, the V12 laser fix, essentially what happens is the um, Sony tried to booby trap the PlayStation 2 Slim and burn out the laser on it and destroy the system in case it could detect the mod chip. So that's why you needed the diode fix or the pick fix. Here we have some NeoFix 13s. And then here we also have another version of the NeoFix 13, which is essentially the PIC chip, which um, the code for that was invented by the Matrix Infinity team, paired with the diode fix um, however, the SUM1 fix is arguably the best one. The diode fix is labeled as a joke. Now we have the slimline fix, which is another version of it. Another version of this pick fix that you have here. Arguably one of the most stable and one of the best. Now here we have uh, an LA chip, and this is an LA protection circuit for the V9 PS2 FAT. So what this is, is essentially this laser will get burnt out on the V9s because uh, I believe the V9s use the HD7 laser as opposed to the 400 A, B, or C. So this has a, uh, a protection circuit right here which will burn out this circuitry before it burns this chip out. It's a protection circuit. Uh, these were also deemed to be a bust or a fake, however they do work and they are better than some other things. I don't know, I think they're all right. And Okay, so that was it for the PS2 chips. I would like to go a little bit more in depth on them later on about something else or, or who knows, you got any questions, leave them in the comments. You know more about any of these things? Tell me, tell me in the comments. Do you know what the O2 chip is? Are you familiar with this? I'm not, feel free to leave in the comments. Bonus video, let's take a look at some other old chips. So super, super quick, here we go. This is a Viper for the GameCube. 
Now, this is essentially just plays burn games and backups. However, what was appealing about the Viper is its uh, tremendous build quality and it's also, up the firmware is upgradable via USB. Really, really cool. Here we have a D2CP key. This is my, this is, this is, this is a Wii chip. I don't like the Wii whatsoever, but this is a very, very, very hard install and I'm looking forward to doing it because I'm looking forward to the challenge. Here we have a, a simpler version. Now here we have um, some drive keys, which really interesting is the drive key came with a sticker of this uh, lady wearing a drive key shirt holding a drive key with the drive key logo. So this is the drive key. It's a solderless solution for the Wii D2CP key. And this is what's really interesting is I actually have a programmer for the drive key. Well, now what this does is you, um, the FPGA on the drive key, you need to program it with the code. You actually inject that with this. I don't think this was available for retail. I'm pretty sure this was a developer uh, style thing. So that's pretty cool. Do I know for a fact? No, no idea, but still kind of cool. Here's some random Xbox 360 chips. And then I also got some Xbox 360 extractor programs. Programmers. Okay, so thank you guys very, very, very much for watching. All about the, any questions about any of this stuff, feel free in the comments. You wanna see more videos about this, uh, social media, don't message me on Facebook. I won't see it, I'm sorry. Just comment on the post, tell me what you wanna see and I'll make it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully a lot more videos coming soon. All right.